Are you also tired of being your agent's clipboard? Shipping logs and screenshots back and forth to fix user issues is incredibly laborious and low leverage. In this video, I'll show you how you can fix this through agent-driven testing, specifically end-to-end -end testing, where it allows your agents to write better tests, see real user-facing failures, and patch code on their own. There are three things that we have to deal with here. Getting agents to write and run tests consistently, getting agents to write high quality tests, and getting agents to debug tests effectively without needing human intervention. Let's dive in. I've built RepoPulse completely using this approach. It's a site that allows you to easily inspect the maintenance health of any GitHub repository. It's built using Next.js, Superbase for auth and DB, and then deployed using Cloudflare workers. And then we use Playwright for the end-to-end -end testing, our main character today. So the first thing that we have to jump into, how to get our agents to write and run tests consistently. In my demos today, I'll be mainly showing Claude code, but the same methodology applies to any coding agents out there. I actually did a count of how many times Claude code proactively wrote tests for the work I did. It only proactively wrote tests for 10 out of the 100 times. So the number is actually really low. And I've had very similar experiences for Cursor and WinServe. By default, agents don't really write tests unless you instruct them to. The first thing that we have to do is teach it the testing workflow. The first thing you got to make sure, have at least a one line description of what your project does inside your Claude.md file. It gives the agent better intuition when creating those tests and working on the rest of the project. The next, make sure it has all of the relevant test commands that it needs to run. It doesn't have to list every single one of the possible debug commands, but have the ones it needs to run day to day. And nextly, outline the full workflow it must go through. And for me, I've asked it to create end-to-end -end tests for all new features and make sure it conforms to existing test standard. The latter makes sure that it explores the code base for additional information and make sure it learns from the existing best practices. And this allows you to not having to cram every single piece of detail directly into your Claude.md file because it could discover a bunch of those information directly from your existing code. And next, I've asked it that it must notify me to review the newly created tests before proceeding with the rest of the implementation. And this gives me an opportunity to check the test is generated before proceeding with the rest of the work. Because if I know the tests are correct, I can force it to just follow the test standard and iterate on that feature until success. Next, you must run tests after implementing new features to ensure they work as expected. So all of this command seems fairly straightforward and should be easy and clear to follow, right? Not quite the case. I found Claude Code only runs and writes tests about 50 to 60% of the times with these instructions in place. As we found that even in Claude Code's own system instructions, it's clearly stated that a must not write any comments. But we've all seen the code that Claude Code generates. There are a ton of comments. So you need something a bit stronger to enforce these kind of rules here. But thankfully, Claude has given us additional tools to do that. Claude Code has implemented a ton of hooks that allows you to capture system events and provide additional context to the coding agent. Here, we're specifically looking at the stop hook because it fires the event just before Claude Code tries to return to the user and gives the tool an opportunity to block the stop with additional context. When I saw this, I decided that actually you could use these information because you also get given the full transcript of the conversation as well to check based on the user work and based on the agent's response, has it actually done all of the test writing and also the test running it should be doing? And if not, block the stop and then 
return to the agent with that additional context. I ended up actually implementing this as part of Cloud Code Boost, a tool that I previously built that allows you an easy way to auto-approve tool executions within Cloud Code. And now with the test enforcer stop hook, you can use it much more easily. And here it is in action. In this case, I've asked Cloud Code to implement a new feature that allows unauthenticated users to view the cache reports. And here it's gone through the implementation correctly and actually was correct implementing the test, but it didn't actually run the test at the end. So the stop hook caught it and then forced Cloud Code to continue to write the test. It ran the test. Obviously here, we were in the happy case, test all pass, and then it returned to the user. Then I went on to commit everything. So this is the real power by enforcing the test because you give the agents the capability to validate changes themselves. And this is specifically the power for end-to-end -end test because end-to-end -end test really mimic proper user behavior and make sure that everything is tested from the user's perspective, not just from an API or from a library perspective. Before I continue, I should remind you that all of the prompts, configs, and tools that I share in these videos are always linked in the companion Beyond the Hype newsletter issue. Be sure to subscribe to not miss out. Link in the description. Let's continue. Now that we got the agents to consistently write tests, this next thing that we got to fix, getting it to write high quality tests. One thing I've generally found with current coding agents is they are great at writing unit tests, but they suck a bit when writing these end-to-end -end tests. So we have to bake in a bit more best practices directly in our rules file. After a ton of iterations, these are the rules I've found to be consistently working really well. First is preferring to use the user focus selectors. This is also very well documented in Playwright's own best practice docs. And I've also outlined for the agents that we want to do this to closely mimic how a user would identify elements and interact with elements on the page. And I've asked it additionally to never use the dot locator unless it's absolutely necessary because these ones are a bit more brittle than the ones outlined above. So here, again, just using really strong languages to force best practices. I would also suggest don't try to run your end-to-end -end test in parallel if you don't have to. In most cases, we are not optimizing for sheer speed and we want easy correctness. And for some of the tests, when you run things extremely in parallel, especially if you're using shared all states, things get messed up and it's not worth the time trying to fix. I won't walk through every single one of the tests, but you can fetch these some configs and try it for yourself. And here's an example test that was generated based on these rules files. In this test, we're testing that if a unauthenticated user tries to refresh, it should show the sign model. Fairly straightforward. So here, page clears the cookie, goes to the reports page, and then checks that everything has been displayed correctly, clicks on refresh, and expects that the dialogue to be present and the refresh to still be there. And now it's showing the sign to refresh and to get the latest repository data. You can clearly see that when you write tests based on these best practices, these things are incredibly easy to read. They also become, in a way, the documentation of how users should actually interact with your site. When you build up these test suites as you build new features, it makes it so easy for you to deploy new things because you can simply just run all the tests to verify the features are working correctly. But the issue that we still run into, as we found with the previous rule file, agents will not follow all the rules 100% of the time. So what happens if it fails to follow the rules? And I thought about adding a test quality enforcer directly in the stop hook as well, but that requires a quite a bit more complex analysis to make it work well. Let me know in the comments if you'd like me to work on that as another weekend project. I went for a simpler solution with the Cloud Code using the custom commands. 
You can add in the custom commands inside the dot called md folders in the commands subfolder there. The files you add here can be accessed as slash commands when you run clot code. You can see that I've applied a very similar template of the things to require for testing and even provided additional examples of good and bad behavior in terms of selections as well as test isolations. Once you get this command set up, you can then run Claude and press slash. You can see that we'll have the review test command here. Once you click on this, it will run that prompt template and then go into the review for the work. I would strongly recommend you reviewing the test manually every now and then to make sure the user logic is correctly encoded in all of your end-to-end -end tests. Now that we've got our coding agents to consistently write tests and write decent quality tests, the last thing we have to fix, getting it to debug tests effectively. For those of you who have been using Playwright for a while, you'll know that because it writes things from a user perspective and it doesn't know the implementation of the backend, when it errors out, you frequently get these test timeouts but those timeouts have no indication of what actually goes on underneath the hood, making it very difficult for agents to actually debug these kind of errors. There are a few settings in Playwright that we can tweak to make it way more debuggable in our coding agents. The first thing to set, reuse existing server to false and setting a specific port for this. Because when you do this, Playwright will run your server together with this test and it will interlace the server log together with the test log itself. When there are server errors for a specific test, the server error logs will come straight after the test failures itself, making it very easy for agents to debug. But the problem is not all failures are caused by server errors and a lot of time they are logic errors and logic bugs inside your original code implementation. How do we solve those? There are two additional settings that you need to set. One, the screenshot to retain only on failure and similarly for the traces because those two provide critical information that our agent can leverage to debug. The screenshot is one that Playwright takes at the final point of test failure. If any error came up directly on the page, if things are not showing correctly, the screenshots would be captured here. And then for the traces, there's one file that's incredibly important. The error context file contains information about the erroneous browser console outputs, the accessibility tree of the entire page so that agent can see everything that's being rendered. And it has a lot of other surrounding information as well. Just by sharing both the screenshots and that error context, it gives the agents almost full context to debug any issues out there. And together with the server logs, if it's able to find things extremely easily. And here's an example where I was asking it to do a user profile page refactor. And here, it's done a few of the tests and realized something was failing. And it read specifically into the error context.md and then realize that when going to the profile page, the user is somehow being redirected to the login page, even though they are authenticated. And then it started to go into better debugging the rest of the issue. So this can work really well, especially for obscure user problems and give the agents even more autonomy to iterate by itself, which these kind of things would have normally required human manual copy and pasting of error logs and screenshots to fix. But agents don't generally have this intuition to look into these error logs. So we need some specific instructions directly in our Claude MD file to make this work well. I additionally have a section about how to debug the end-to-end -end test. And then I've told it that it will always be given the full playwright output where it can find the error context.md and also the instant screenshot. And it must be using that to fix the failures. Here, I've even copy and pasted a very specific example of the output, teaching it how to extract test screenshot examples and the error context.md file directly, then reason about it. Again, another very simple addition. 
After dealing with these three points, your agents is far more autonomous. And it's not only able to implement new features, but also able to consistently write tests, write good quality tests, and fix test failures all by itself, producing great quality product on the other end. If you are curious of why I stuck with Cloud Code for all this time, you should check out this video just up there. As always, you can find the prompts, configs, and tools that I've used directly in the companion issue of Beyond the Hype newsletter. Be sure to subscribe to not miss out. Until then, happy shipping, and I'll see you in the next one.